to us, you know, in a negative way. Like later we just went and checked if the, if the first line of the email had something negative, we would just like click, click, click and delete all of it. They wanted to make it look like we go around saying like, yeah, oh, fuck your religion, you know, fuck who you are, fuck everything, you know, la, 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 la. Uh, That is the weird thing, because it was never on a personal level. It was more on a conceptual level where you're, you know, you're saying fuck you, like I said before, to a stereotype or to, you know, it's not a, not saying fuck you to Eti Pretorius from Pretoria because he goes to church, you know, like I'm um, saying fuck you to the, the bigger idea of believing in lies or whatever. You know, I've seen letters from Duomini saying freedom of speech is important, we need to give these guys space. That's, that's really significant, you know, that, that these guys are saying we understand what these guys are about. I think Christen kon anders in the kerk kon anders reageer het oor julle F God situasie. It is a Christen's right om te sê oor is verkeerd. We need to do it. And the manier waarop hulle doen is baie keer verkeerd. Uh, ek sal hulle nooit judge nie. Ek sal sê wat jy verdoen het nou net is verkeerd. Maar kom saam met ons gaan drink 'n koffie en kos tjera oor wat ook al. Jy gaan nie Ik ga niet ons weg sê, sê hoor hier, ek, net omdat julle nou dit gedoen het, ga ik nooit met jou praat nie. Net omdat julle dit gedoen het, is julle nou vir die duivel uit die helheid. Ek gaan my kinders verbied, ek gaan julle series verbrand. Jy weet, dit is die ergste ding wat jy kan doen. Dat was heel dit net um, geskryver in die beeld, en as julle net uit um, haat spraak tegen elkaar, en dit was my die haars eerste, want ek weet verseker, um, as Jesus in dag nog mens is en op aardig en, en, en geleef, en as hy die eerste hebben uit klap, en hy die eerste beer gekoop, dat ek verveil, en hy volgens sê dat hy doet, Kom eens, chat, wat gaan aan? Zonder om enigszins een brief van het kaap af te e-mailen te zeggen, oh, ga je dood maken? Of wat willen doen is belachelijk. Um, so dit was mijn aardzuster, dat was mijn glad die liefde net. Die. Mensen het, toe ek by beeld gewerk het, baie keer ingebel, dan is wat vir jou vraag, wat is die type mens skryf volk God op een kindse beers hier, weet? Again, I don't think God needs us to defend him, you know. I mean, sure, we need to fight for what's right, in a sense. I don't think we need to get so worked up about about something that's actually offending us more than anything. They don't mind me not believing in the same God as what they do, you know. They don't. Uh, most of them probably um, understand the fact that that thing was thrown out of proportion and it's bullshit, you know. I love only where you hear catchphrases, "Goy," and say Jesus loves you, and what will Jesus do, and uh, you know, "Sika goed." I love all. I love all. You must. Okay. So. Uh... Wil jij hoor wie ek is? Wil jij weet wie ek is? Of wil jij net vir my vertel wie ek nie is? honest about it, I was very surprised to see that it actually made them very tired. It made them, it emotionally drained them and it made them very tired. You know, that, that was a weird time, you know, I think everyone in the band, like, sort of analysing, like, the place we are at, you know, and what's going on, you know, and, like, what have become, you know, like, we are now this, like, uh, sort of um, um, victim number one in, like, the Afrikaans community of, like, not being cool, you know. It was a donker time in our band. And we were just so confused, you know, lots of different things were pouring in. This one move and some drunken stupidity could be the thing that ends it all, you know. Um, some of the fans were saying, yeah, oh, they're not digging the band anymore, or whatever, you know. So I think at that stage, it was quite a, personally, I think I was like, yes, it's fucking out. I don't think that we think that we feel it's justified, you know. we. I think deep down we feel like a bunch of morons that did this thing and it sort of sort of blew up like this. And um, I think we, we kind of lived in a bubble at that stage. We were saying anything and we thought it was just us. I thought that I must have to do it, but but come us figure out what it is, what things are out there. I remember like two big festivals cancelled, almost like three days after that it hit the press, you know. Uh, we weren't allowed to go play the KKNK festival because uh, the Bure were boycotting APSA and APSA was the main sponsor of KKNK, you know, saying things like, we're going to take our business elsewhere if you, if Fogel Polisikar plays at this festival. Um, having to, like, we, were, we were totally banned from, like, staying in Otsurung, so nobody in, in Otsurung wanted to give us, like, a, um, no accommodation or anything like that, so... 
Um, because everyone was scared anyone everyone else was it's all a money game obviously everyone was scared anyone else was going to boycott them and when we got there the first night it was like cops everywhere with dogs and security and a guy sitting in a tree you know what i mean like watching us out so we will drive into this like secure area park the car there they told us to park it here with like an escape route they've worked out the cops rock up with dogs smell out the whole tent make sure there's no bombs or anything weird there search all the people there's cops backstage, sure no one jumps the fence. I remember there was two lighties that came to look over the fence just to say hi or whatever. And the cops were all over them and got them away there or whatever. So that obviously they were very like protective now because anything might happen, you know. And they're praying outside the actual venue and like in encouraging kids not to go to the show and whatever. I stem glad you saw me that they don't do it. This is is what you need to do. This is um and I think back now it was a positive thing. I think, um, you know, um, that, that changed me as a person, you know, the way to, to, um, I think about people and um, that sort of put me in my place and realized that, you know, there's a lot of stuff you got to keep for yourself in life. It really initiated a very important debate. You've got to shake the cages every now and then to get society to, to, uh, to grow up. It might be very controversial to say, but I think that at the time there were probably also a lot of Afrikaans people that have not really sorted out their religious views yet. They believe in God, they might even go to church, but that's it. And all was a Christian kring here, the CSV was awesome. Je was in your bubble geweest. Maar voor de eerste keer dat iemand gesê, kan iemand ook een God bij en van ons sê, ons dit nie nodig nie. Wat mis dadelijk dat denk, wow, maar jy sê, dadelijk het ons nie God nodig nie. En wat dit doen is, dit sit dude op a journey. Dit het my op a journey gesit van, wow, is hier erg God, want hierdie awesome band sê dit. So, kom ek vind van myself. So ek denk, dit is wat cool was, en dit is wat cool is om te gebeur, is mense aanvaard nie net sommig goed nie. Mense gaan nie sommig kerk toe en dit moet gesê, en dan vat jy dit, die mense gaan question dit, die mense gaan op een mission met die heren. En contrary to popular belief, is ons eigenlijk nie so apathies, of hard, of punk, of of zwart skaak, soos wat mense dink ons is nie. Ek dink ons het het gedoen om om uiteindelijk een positieve verandering te maak, jy weet, maar om dit te doen, jy weet, is ook om ouwers hulle kinders pak slaag, jy, of wat ek al, jy weet, om daar uit te kom, is daar betekere rude wakening nodig. Obviously, after this whole religious debacle, I think even before that, you know, touring constantly and, um, you know, always being around each other, you know, never having a holiday, and then, you know, me breaking my arm. I think everyone was quite tired then. And I think Hunter sort of started integrating that in his writing as well, and he was playing with this idea of, you know, um, calling the band quits. It's like they packed in 10 years of, uh, of events into three years. You know, imagine playing the same 12 songs every night. And then you go out and you party. And you party, party, party hard until 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. You do that for two years, you're going to burn out. And um, we, we had a meeting and we decided that uh, we'll take a break, you know. I mean, we, we decided to uh, call the album Swan Song and, you know, putting, putting a sort of rest to, a, to an era and then taking a break and then seeing what happens, you know. I think we've progressed a lot as people through uh, the four years, you know, extensive touring, meeting a lot of different people from a lot of different towns, sort of respecting everyone's, starting respecting everyone's opinion, you know. And that's obviously maybe why we turned down our anger, because we realized we couldn't direct it at anyone. It's not the actual people, it's the, the bigger idea of it that we were against. You know, everyone thinks that they're doing the right thing and believes in their own cause. I think that actually taught me a lot. If I didn't go on tour and actually meet people that believed in different things, that come from a different background, I don't think I would have been able to see that. Really.